Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with our fifth episode of the Gruel Turf Podcast. Uh, it's been a hot minute since we made the last podcast. Uh, feels like it was a while ago at this point, probably a month, month and a half or something like that. It's been a long time, we've had a lot of things going on, and obviously we'll go over all that today, and then we'll obviously talk about our main topic of the day, which was the RCQ recap from now a week ago that I was at. So, I'm really excited to go uh, kind of talk about the funny stories and stuff from that. It's going to be great. So, all right. So, again, as always, got my list here of stuff that we're going to go over today. Um, hopefully, I don't miss anything, which I don't think I will. So, all right. So, first thing here is obviously from behind me, you can see it's a new layout. Um, so, basically, I was recording videos over there originally. It was like right in that spot where that shelf's at. Now we're on the other side, which is like behind where the Calvin Johnson poster used to be essentially. So now we're over here. And obviously you can see all those, all the wonderful, wonderful plushes we have there. So quite a few of them. I mean, I don't even know how many we have at this point. There, there's so many of them, obviously. And then not that you can see it, but I got a couple of gaming things there now. And then I got the shelf just full of like the Pokemon figurines and like booster boxes, sealed decks, that kind of thing. It's got just all my shash, pretty much. So, yes, new layout. They've been doing the layout for a handful of videos. For those who noticed, shout out to you. Whatever. Just new layout now. Um, and then now I have all my cards in this cabinet over here, which obviously you can't see that. So, um, but yes, new layout. I've been meaning to do it for a hot minute. I'm really excited that I was able to finally do it just one day. Woke up, was like, all right, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're getting it done. And we're just going to have a nice layout now. So, something better to look at instead of just blank wall now. So, all right. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, the next thing is I was doing the spoiler videos for a while. Um, you know, like spoilers were coming in hot and doing them. Uh, essentially what happened is during the RCQ, um, not the RCQ. Well, yes, the RCQ, but during the sport, uh, when all the spoilers were coming out, I got incredibly busy, um, you know, obviously getting ready for the RCQ, went to that, came home and then ended up going back down state to see some family for a couple days so fell way behind on the spoilers um i mean i think the last one we uploaded was probably like the day after the the main big announcement and everything like that so yeah it's been a while um probably uh sometime either this week or early next week we'll do like my we'll do like my top 10 cards from the set or whatever like we did with Phyrexia just go over some of the really cool cards that are from the set which there's plenty that I never even talked about so I'm excited to share that with you guys just keep an eye out on that for either early later this week or early next week so um that'll be out obviously which I think the set's really awesome I'm really excited to be able to talk about it with you guys um next thing I know we talked about this a little bit um in the um the 100 subscriber special and everything like that. But yes, thank you so much to everybody who didn't watch those videos that we finally hit 100 subs. Um, it was great. I think right now we're at like 121 since um, since that video, I believe, right now. It's been a hot minute. But yes, thank you to everybody who subscribed and everything. Um, next giveaway is not going to be until 200 subs, which probably will be a lot quicker than getting to the 100 subs. So just keep an eye out. Uh, for that and it's going to be obviously the, the giveaways are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger every time so yes it's going to be great so just keep an eye out for that uh the so i guess the next thing we pretty much got nothing else to talk about except for the question of the day which we'll hold that till the very end um and then obviously now we're going to talk about the rcq so right before i hop into it here a huge huge shout out to hunter slash bg stilts who's in the comment section uh he made top four of the rcq uh he ended up losing a really really close one uh to blue white control in the semis um so shout outs to him he didn't even know he was coming until the day before i gave him mono green devotion and it worked out obviously very very well so huge shout outs to him it's great um so we took a whole whole big group down there. It was like me and I mean we had like a whole car. My whole car was full of seven people, so it was a fun trip. Um, yeah, obviously uh, Hunter did the best, uh, and then another guy we went with played a Rakdos mid range. Uh, he play, uh, went four and two, so did pretty solid overall. The rest of us didn't do as hot, so <laughs> but it was it was a lot of fun. It's been a long time since a lot of us have went to a competitive event in that capacity. Um, personally my first rcq i've ever been to i i mean obviously they're similar to like pcqs and the, the scg iqs of the past but that was my first one i've technically ever been to so and it was a great time um it was at galactic toys and games in kentwood they're not sponsoring this just shout out to them 
they're great. People that work there are great. Huge shout out to Team Swish uh, with the stream live cap, with the <laughs> the live stream recap. Uh, if you want to check out that live stream, I will leave a description below. I'll, I'll leave it a link in the description below for Swish Gaming's Twitch. If you want to check out that live stream, uh, it's all there, all the rounds and stuff like that. Great commentators. Huge shout outs to them. They're awesome. And I think that's about everything that we covered. Oh, huge shout out to uh, Nathan, this guy I used to play with back in the day. He also played Modern Green Devotion and that he... Uh, he also made top four. And then huge shout outs to my man Chris. Uh, he lives pretty close to me overall. I've known Chris for years. And he ended up getting to the finals. And it was a two slaughter. So he is going to the regional championship in Dallas. Huge shout out to him. Uh, great job. Fantastic player. Uh, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that he qualified. You know, it was only a matter of time. So huge shout out to him. And also, while we're also on that topic, this upcoming weekend is the regional championship in San Diego. I know a lot of people that are going to San Diego. Too many to list off. Good luck to all of you guys. And obviously, I'll be keeping an eye on the results. And just so proud of you guys. So, all right. Now we're hopping to the RCQ recap. So, my recap, I went two and three. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely not my best tournament I've ever been to, obviously. Um, I played Gruel Dragons, which for those who um, saw that deck list, um, like about month, month and a half ago, it was the Gruel Dragons list that I posted. It has like Thunderbreak Regent uh, in, the, in the thumbnail. Um, that's pretty much the list I ended up playing. The only change was I turned the Tameo Safekeeping in the sideboard, I turned that into a Heroic Intervention. Um... So I guess what we'll kind of do is I'll just talk, I'm not going to talk about the deck because I've already talked about it before, but if you just want the quick, the quick deck list and not watching the video, I will link the, leave the link for the deck list in the description below if you want to check that out. Um, so yes, it was Gruel Dragons, like, you know, Elves, Planeswalkers ramping into uh, Glorybringer, Goldspan Dragon, that kind of thing. So, all right, hopping into it here. So uh, first round, I actually had a feature match. So if you want to check out at least that, um, you know, feel free to, even though I got clobbered by bogles so so bogles is a terrible matchup for me i i don't have any main bird interaction pretty much sideboard is very very limited in terms of what i could bring to the table against bogles uh so game one i had an, a, a great hand it was like two lands um it was two lands domri elf and like couple dragons like the per, the perfect hand we won the dice roll so it was turn one elf they go turn two Glade, uh, not Glade Cover Scout. Oh, yeah, Glade Cover Scout, one with Hexproof. So I'm like, okay, well, if we're fast, we, we, we could still get this. So I go turn two Domri, uh, make a, you know, make a red pass. They go Ethereal Armor, Ethereal Armor, kill Domri. So right off the bat, we lost our Planeswalker. So essentially, the rest of game one went Dragon, Chump Block, Dragon, Chump Block, and just got ran over by the Glade Cover Scout. So we go to game two. Um, I brought in my Cinder Vines uh, so I could blow up their enchantments. And then I brought in an Anger of the Gods to maybe, you know, try and like turn two or three, get rid of a, a slip, um, a Glade Cover Scout with, you know, like a couple enchantments on it, that kind of thing. And I think we also brought in one Clothis because I took out my Draconic Roars because obviously Draconic Roar is really bad. If you're trying to target their creatures, it's not great against them. So obviously we just took, we took those out. And then we brought in, yeah, the one cloth, this, the anger of the gods, and the two cinder vines. So, um, so game two, uh, mulligan to four, kept a one lander. The hand was Carplusion Forest, Anger of the Gods, Cinder Vines, Orb of Dragon Kind, I'm pretty sure. So, first draw, we ended up ripping the land. So we were able to play the Cinder Vines, drew another land. We actually, all things considered, I drew really well out of a mulligan to four. Um, really what it came down to was they had the Hushbringer, which wasn't a big problem. Then they drew the, they had the one of Kaya's ghost form, which for those who don't know, it's a black enchantment where if the creature would die or go to exile, it comes back. So, and I had the glory bringer. I grabbed it off the orb of dragon kind, but essentially it was, they played that. So I had to like do two things with it. And then they went, then they went ethereal armor, ethereal armor, all the glitters just had a giant flying life linker, and then they, they just took the game. So there was really my Mulligan to four didn't help. If I had, if I would have had the hand I had game one in game two, I probably would have won that game for sure because it would have been turn three glory bringer, kill your hush bringer next turn, followed up with another big dragon. Like it probably would have been a win most likely. Uh, but you know that's how magic goes sometimes. You just mulling into four and keep iffy hands and you lose. So, so yeah, it wasn't the best round one. 
So round two, uh, I played against blue-white control, and this was probably my favorite match of the day. Um, so game one, um, it was a great hand again. I went turn one elf, turn two Domri. Um, so it, it was unfortunate for my opponent. So I played a turn three goldspan dragon, and they absorbed it. And the tricky part was actually, no, I was on, yeah, I was on the draw because they had three mana for absorb. So Domri Anarcha Bull says plus one. It says that uh, creatures you control can't be countered this turn, and they played the counter. They played absorb to you know counter a gain three life. So even if your spell can't be countered, you can still target it with the counter spell. Uh, so they gained three life, but then it the gold span dragon resolved and. They were kind of confused, but I said, you know, my creatures can't be countered this turn. Um, so I was playing a Japanese copy, so you couldn't technically, it was like the Japanese altar, so you couldn't technically read it, um, but I played it, and they're like, okay, sure. And I said, D did you, do you need Oracle text on this? Because it's, you know, it's Japanese, you know, you might not know what it does. And he goes, no, no, I, I know what it does. So uh, pretty much won the game on the back of Domri, and my opponent in the, it, you know, before game two, was like, oh, if I would have known what that card did, it would have been a lot different. And whereas I don't disagree with them, that's something where, you know, I offered Oracle text. They said they knew what the card does. So at that point, I kind of did everything I could do. Um, I wasn't playing the the Japanese one to, like, you know, get an advantage. It's because I like to pimp up my decks non-foil. And that's about the only option you have non-foil for Domri, pretty much. So, but yeah, so it was a little weird. The weird interaction, had a judge call you know, asking for Oracle tax and things of that nature. Um, so it was kind of weird, but you know, I did everything I could do. So game two, um, I'm like really ahead. I have a Cinder Vines and a Clothis. They rip the, the farewell and they exile all my creatures, my enchantments, my everything. Um, and then pretty much had nothing. Just, you know, I stayed in a little longer. They, they had like Teferi and I was trying to get in with the gold span and they made a bit, they cycled shark typhoon, made a big shark. And at that point it was game over game three kept a, a solid hand but it was so iffy it was a little slow um i ended up like just barely like one for wanting my threats and then they like aether gust my th my threat back and then it was like really tricky got stuck on four mana most of the game had domri um which was able to get me out ahead a little bit um so the the the, the main part of it was i end up sticking the domri well the the clothis i end up getting clothis so i'm chipping them away so um, I ended up drawing a couple Thunderbreak Regents, which were huge because I only had like Glory Bringers and Gold Spans in my hand, and I didn't have five mana. So, ooh, excuse me. So I played the Thunderbreak Regent the one turn. I replayed it because they gussed it back to my hand. Well, back I put it on top, played it again. So they go to so they end of turn. They had a, they, well, they had a shark. It was a three three shark. So they go to their turn and they go tech for three. So very clearly. I mean, not very clearly, but there's a very good chance that they have a Wandering Emperor. They they would never make that play. They got tons of untapped mana. They would never make that play if they didn't have a Wandering Emperor so they could put a plus one, plus one counter on the shark and kill the, the Thunder Break. And that, I'm like, whatever. I'll, I'll take the, the three. I don't even care. So, goes to my turn. Draw, cloth this trigger. I eat something out of the agreement. I put him to six. So, I go combat, attack for four. So, they play Wandering Emperor. Which, uh, for those who don't know what Thunderbreak is, is whenever it's targeted by a spell or an ability in opponent controls, they take three. So, they go Wandering Emperor. I'm like, sure. They go down tick, uh, minus on your Thunderbreak Regent, I gain two life. So, Thunderbreak Regent tr trigger goes on the stack. They go down to three life. But, I had the one-up heroic intervention from the sideboard to save the Thunderbreak. So this is the tricky other thing. So they had a white and a colorless untap. So even if, so I go heroic intervention, hexproof and indestructible. Even if they had the fateful, the fateful absence, they still were going to take another three and, you know, and lose the game. So, but then it was weird because, so it's exile target tap creature, you gain two life. But so because I gave it hexproof and indestructible, well, I gave it hexproof, um, the ability fizzles and they don't gain two life. So then my opponent was like, oh, I still gain the two life. Obviously they don't, so we had to call the judge over, and the judge came over and said, "Yep, nope, the you know the ability fizzles. You don't gain the two lives." So we stole the win against Blue White Control. It was very, very, very close. 
Long story short, too, I guess there's probably not a better time to bring this up. Thunderbreak Regent was the best card in the deck the entire day. It just, hands down, it, it did everything, pretty much, for me. So, so we ended up getting the win. It was extremely close with a one-off heroic intervention from the sideboard. So, we go to the third round. I play against Gruel Vehicles, and this was probably the most, like, not irritating, per se, but it was one of those games where you really feel like you should win and you don't. So, so game one... You know, the reckless, the reckless storm seeker, giving everything haste, right? So there was a board. So basically, I went like block with my elf, stomp you end of turn with one of them because I had two. All I needed to do was draw an untapped land because then I they were at nine. Play it, glory bringer. Attack with the gold span, the glory bringer, and the elf. Exert on your elf as your blocker. That's all I had to do. But I needed an untapped land. Drew. It was a layer of the Hydra. So we lose game one. All we need was the untapped land. So game two, um, won a pretty won a pretty close one overall. Ended up getting through the um they used the Crone War and stole uh Thunderbreak Regent, but I was able to get it back, get in for the damage and everything. Um, but it was also funny game two. So game two, I also needed an untapped land or I was dead. Drew the Crag Crown, so I'm like, all right, perfect, we got it that time. And then game three. Um, they kind of had the nut draw. So I had a lot of removal and then bigger dragons to play. So I played a Thunder Rake Regent, a Crone War. They stole my dragon, gave it haste attack. So the next turn I go, another Thunder Rake Regent to help block. They go, second a Crone War, steal it, kill me. So it was kind of like, like a Crone War is the best card in that matchup for them. It's really the only way I lose most of the time is a Crone War. Um, but yeah, it was one of those things where if I drew that untapped land... In game one, there's a chance I could have just won the match 2-0 and been done, you know, been done with it. Um, that's the kind of matchup where we'll play 10 games and I'll win five. Like it's very 50-50. We're extremely similar decks just in general. Um, it was a little upsetting to lose that in a way, but I, I wasn't mad per se. But it was like, dang, like should have won that. So, um, so yep, and I'm going to one and two. Uh, the next round I played against Mono White Humans, which I would say is pretty favorable for me. The only way they really win is Brave the Elements. Like, Brave the Elements is the only card they have that can really beat me in general. So, game one, they go nuts. Like, it was like one drop into one drop, one drop into two drop. Like, just slamming just Luminarch Aspirants and, like, everything like that. So, the tricky part was they were stuck on two lands. And because of that, I was able to re-stabilize the board because they were stuck on two lands. Like, clearly had Brutal Cathars, weren't drawing Brave the Elements. Like, if they had a Brave the Elements, the, the game would have been over. Like, the game would have been over. They had so many dudes. So, because they didn't draw it, I was able to just chip in with Glorybringer, uh, not, not Glorybringer, uh, Goldspan Dragon, uh, and just able to finish the game off barely. It was extremely close. I shouldn't have won game one, but we stole it. Uh, so game two, he goes one drop into Luminarch into one drop second, like, like Thalia attack. And then the next turn went Thalia's Lieutenant trigger attack before blocks brave the elements. Like it was just like, just bam, bam, didn't even stand a chance. So I was like, okay, yep. That's the human's hands they get sometime. So we go to game three, I get my opener and it's. Like, Draconic Roar, Stomp, Thunderbreak Regent, lands. I'm like, yeah, this is exactly what we want. It's kill your dude, kill your dude, kill your dude, dragon. So, that's exactly what happens. I go, kill your dude, kill your dude, kill your dude. And then, um, unfortunately, they they got really land flooded. Like, really land flooded. Like, I think they ended the game with, like, six or seven lands in play. Um, like, they obviously needed to draw some threats, and they did not. They just sat there and just drew, um, just drew land. So, and then I was, like, ended up just chipping in with the Thunderbreak and the, and the Glorybringer. Um, so, yeah, they were a little upset, and I don't blame them, you know. It's, it's a pretty, I'd say it's slightly favorable for me, because I have so much removal. Um, but it's just one of those things where it was, you know, you're really close, you know. It was, like, nothing you could really do to a certain extent, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I ended up two and two. And then in the last round I played, there were six rounds. I played against Mardu Sacrifice. Um, so the first game against Mardu Sacrifice, I won by a lot. Like it was turn two Domri into turn three Gold uh, Glory Bringer, exert on your dude. Turn four Gold Spin Dragon, attack, make a treasure, stomp your dude. Like it was a blowout. So game two, 
Um, game two, they go, they're on the play, obviously. They go, turn one, Thoughtseize. Take my Clothis. Turn two, Thoughtseize, Thoughtseize. Took my Draconic Roar and my Anger of the God. So at this point, I had, like, nothing in my hand that was even worth, like, anything. And then drew nothing, and they just ran me over. So then game three, I'm mulligan to six, and my hand is, uh, Grafdigger's Cage, Draconic Roar, Draconic Roar. And I'm like, man, this isn't great, but it's pro it's probably good enough. So let's, we'll run with it. So then they go, I'm like, turn one cage, you know, whatever. They go, turn, turn one Thoughtseize, take a Draconic Roar. I'm like, all right, whatever. Draw is a land. I'm like, all right, whatever, land, go. Thoughtseize, take the other Draconic Roar. So I just have lands in hand. And then we, pers I proceeded to go land, 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 land or elf, land, elvish mystic. So we drew no dragons, no planeswalkers, no nothing. We drew lands and elves. That was it. So, which is kind of ironic because with the lands thing, because I was, I played 25 lands in the deck, sat there the entire night struggling to draw like the lands, like the, like the fifth land to be able to like play our stuff on curve. And then it was like, at the end, it was just the culmination of, you know, it's like the, like, like my opponent said, it was the, the monkey paw. We're like, oh, I wish I drew more lands. Okay, fine. You know, it was like one of those things. So, yep, ended up losing. Decided not to play the last round because I was most likely out of top 16 range because my breakers were so poor. Uh, so I decided to drop, just watch my friends play. Um, but yes, that's essentially how the RCQ went. Um, had a lot of fun. It was great. The deck played pretty fun overall. Um changes to it yes so changes today would probably be cut two gold span dragons for two storm breath dragons um i know there was a recent magic online list that essentially took gruel vehicles and dragons and mashed it um so instead of going like the planeswalker route like we're going um in like with eight five drop dragons they're going like low to the curve where it's they're still playing reckless storm seeker they're playing love struck beast they're playing uh that kind of thing basically 100 percent to the t instead of playing asegas chariot in in sky sovereign they swapped it with thunderbreak regent and glory bringer and then instead of playing uh obliterating bolt they're playing draconic roar like that is like swap for swap everything they did i know it's been floating around a lot of people oh thunderbreak region's great it's always been great it's just no one plays it because it's dragons so which is just funny um but yeah so dragons uh, was a, it's a solid deck i mean it was it played like the matches like the games i won felt like there was no way i could lose and then the matches i lost were like like it was like my hand was just terrible or thought seized into oblivion that kind of thing so or like double a crone war like it was just like yep powerful stuff so it was just one of those things but uh no deck was really fun i had a great time playing it um make a couple changes here and there definitely the next deck i'm most likely going to play at an event is probably going to be gruel dragons oh uh, not gruel dragons gruel dinosaurs um spoiler alert i'm really excited about rampaging raptor in the new set as well as invasion of ixalan with rampaging raptor um so definitely keep an eye out for an upcoming Gruul uh, Dinosaurs deck list for that. So definitely keep an eye out for that. There's going to be one coming out very, very soon for that. I know we made one last year, but obviously we've got some huge updates that are going to really, really be great additions to the deck. So that's going to be really fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think we got everything other than the question of the day. With RCQ, it was great. Had a lot of fun. Dragons. I think we covered everything. Didn't see any crazy decks when I was there. Um, the only really unique deck I saw was, uh, someone was playing this Mox Amber, like, humans deck? Like, it was like a Bant humans playing Mox Amber, I think, because they play a lot of, like, legendary white creatures, like, they have, like, Thalia and, like, Tomic and things like that, so they were, like, using that as, like, acceleration, probably, like, turn three Cocos or something, I don't know, it was really unique, I didn't end up catching up with them at all, but they sat next to me when I played against the Mardu Sacrifice, and yeah, it seemed like a pretty cool deck, other than that, it was a lot of mono green, a lot of blue-white control, I feel like blue-white was, like, the most popular deck there, it seemed like, um, Rakdos midrange, Rakdos Sacrifice, a little bit of humans, um, a little bit of a Tarka red, um some gruel vehicles and i think that was pretty much i don't know it was a very standard metagame 
it was not a lot of mono green, but the mono green that was there, they did very well on average. So I don't remember exactly what the top eight looked like. I think there was like a grease fang, like three mono greens, two two blue whites, so it's six, an Atarka red, and something else. I I don't know. I I don't know what else there was. Oh, uh, maybe I think it was a tar. It was either well, it was either. It was either uh, the Neoform Atraxa deck or it was Grease Fang that was in top that it was in the top eight, but I think it was Grease Fang overall. So, but anyways, I'm I'm rambling on at this point. So okay, so that's pretty much the end of the episode. The last thing we got to go over is the question of the day. So from the previous podcast, the question of the day was, "What's your favorite Magic plane?" Um, and we had two responses. So Nick Bailey, Nick Bailey, uh, I feel like you're always floating down in the comments. Really appreciate that, by the way. Um, you said that your favorite planes were Theros and Lorwyn. Me personally, I'm a huge fan of Theros. I real I love Theros. Theros is probably one of my favorite planes in general as well. Um, Lorwyn, big fan of Lorwyn. I the, I don't play a lot of cards from Lorwyn in general. Um, I would say, for me, like from Lorwyn block, I really only play Primal Command. Like Primal Command was one of my favorite cards in the Ponza deck I used to play years ago. Um, I like the command cycle in general, but Primal Command was definitely my favorite. So, yeah, I can definitely agree to that. And then we got Colby saying Theros or Amonkhet. Again, I love Theros. Amonkhet, I feel like, was a very cool block. There was a lot of, like, not, like, overpowered cards, but just, like, strong cards in general. Obviously, one of my favorite cards, Glorybringer, is in the Amonkhet set. So, obviously, you know, one of our favorite cards is from there in general. But, yeah, I'm a big fan of Amonkhet. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we do return to Amonkhet somewhat soon. Um, but I definitely wouldn't mind it. You know, we're going back to Ixalan next year, like very early next year. Um, so I think overall it, yeah, I'm a big fan of Amonkhet. So the next question of the day today is pretty simple. What card are you excited for, for March of the Machines the most? You can also pick the Aftermath. Not that they, I think they've only shown like one card for March of the Machine, the Aftermath. Um, but yes, just let me know in the comment section below. What, what card are you excited for, for March? Doesn't even have to be any specific format. It can be any card for any reason. Just let me know in the comment section below. Well, we reached the end of the episode. I'd like to thank everybody for joining me on this ep the fifth episode of the Gruel Turf Podcast. Just keep an eye out for the next one. Obviously, we got some deck techs and things coming out here very soon. It's going to be a very fun time for Magic with March of the Machines coming out. Very excited to uh, bring some new stuff to you guys. Catch you in the next episode.